Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not keep care for the sheep. But I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the father knows me and I know the father, and I lay my life down for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the father loves me because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay down it on my own accord. I have the power to lay it down and I have the power to take it up again. I have received this command from my father. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. This day in the church year includes so many old favorite passages. Peter chastising the scribes for their lack of faith. Of course, David in the valley and green pastures by still waters. Jesus, the son of heaven, come down to be our good shepherd. And then there's John calling us little children, telling us to love. So many common themes and such an uncommon year. We're in Easter. I know that because the altar has flowers on it and the skies are blue and we sing Alleluia. But in some ways, it feels like we didn't leave Lent behind. Derek Chauvin's trial began on March 29th. He is the police officer who murdered George Floyd last year. The trial ended this week and he was declared guilty on all counts. But every day since that trial began, United States police officers have killed three or more people every day. In fact, since this day last year, Good Shepherd Saturday, 1,306 people of God, beloved children, people who matter, have been killed by the police. Just saying that sentence aloud feels despicable. It's unbelievable, but actually it, it is believable. It's life in America. It's life under empire. Listen to the names of these people God loves. Fat Guvan Vong, Andrew Brown, Doward Baker, Antonio Cantu, Edgar Luis Toraldo, Bradley Olson, Larry Jenkins, Robert Delgado, Alex Garcia, Sammy Barbosa, Jeffrey Sachs, Lindani Mayini, Marcelo Garcia, Jacob Wood, Peyton Ham, Anthony Thompson, Pierre Alexander Shelton, Dante Wright, Faustin Gutigo, Joshua Mitchell, Deshaun Tanner, Douglas Barton, James Alexander, Devin Whiteagle Coy Kendall, Tyler Green, Roy Jackal, Iram Mumber Sycap, Silas Lambert, Gabriel Caso, Jeffrey Appelt, Jose Aranas, Juan Carlos Estrada, Samuel Yeager, Noah Green, Nazareth Viertel, Deshaun Tatum, James Eiler, Steve Frostglass, Makia Bryant. All of these people were killed by the police in the last 23 days in this time of Easter. And we're supposed to sit here and proclaim Christ is risen? Death is defeated? We have overcome the grave? We haven't. This whole country is a graveyard. 
I know this isn't the sermon you expected me to preach. This isn't the typical Easter sermon. This isn't what people want to hear when they come to church during this time of celebration. In Easter, people want to be uplifted. I promise there will be time for that. In Easter, people want to hear you are perfect as you are. And you are perfect as you are. God abides in you. But what is not perfect is this world. And we are part of it. We are participants, sometimes knowingly, sometimes unknowingly, in the systemic sin that takes the lives of people God loves. Now this wrestling between, on the one hand, believing in a resurrected God, and on the other hand, the reality of our lives as we live here in this world, is something the author of 1 John thought a lot about. 1 John is sort of like an ancient commentary on the Gospel of John. So when you read John and the Johns straight through, you won't see the words kingdom or good news or repentance. Matt and Mark and Luke say those words a lot. But the Johns say love, truth, no witness. To John, the gospel is God's love story to us, a people who live in a broken world, but believe in the wholeness of the kingdom to come. And our work as followers of Christ is to bear witness to the reality of this world while also following the resurrected Christ. And together, the witness and the following is called love. Well, what does that really mean? What, is, what does God expect of us? What does John expect of us? According to our text, to follow Christ in love, to live into the resurrection, it means something concrete. Mere faith, believing that Jesus is the son of God, is not enough for John. Now, I know Luther says we're saved by faith alone, and that's true. But our task is harder and greater and more beautiful than faith alone. Faith and love are the fruits of a single grace. So if we call ourselves Christians, baptized in the grace of God, it means we are called to this kind of love, a kind of love that changes our lives, a kind of love that demands we lay down our lives. Lay down our lives. For our Jewish friends, the expression Kaddish Hashem, literally to honor the name of God, has the same meaning as when we Christians say, lay down our lives. Now, I'm not talking about martyrdom. And when John used this phrase, he wasn't either. In fact, his example of what it means to lay down your life is to be a person who has the goods of this world and gives it away to people with need. John reminds us that our privilege is a gift of this world, a poisoned gift. White privilege is a gift of Satan. Piles of money in banks in a city where 77,000 people sleep on the streets is a gift of Satan. And make no mistake, there is nothing wrong with being white. There is nothing wrong with money. The wrongness is when we refuse to lay down our lives for our neighbors, when we refuse to let go of that privilege and money and resources, and when we let our guilt turn our gaze away instead of letting the eyes of our heart be opened, instead of bearing witness. We have to love God and each other more than we love anything else in the universe more than money, more than power, more than respectability, more than social status, more than privilege, and more than comfort. John wrote this letter to his community and to us. And he said, little children, let us lay down our lives. He knew that it was a challenge. It's not something easy. He knew that it was a challenge in this world where empire tries to control every aspect of our lives. And for us in this pandemic, in the year 2021, I mean, we are absolutely, completely exhausted. 
So how do we keep giving? How do we, how do we lay down our lives when it feels like we have nothing left to give? How is it possible for us to do that when it feels like the ground beneath us is being pulled away? We can't even gather in church. How little we have, and we are so desperate to cling to it. Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. You see, dear people, it is possible for one reason and one reason only. There is another here with us. Jesus is the cornerstone, Peter tells us, of the new world we are building now. God restores our souls, David tells us, and our cups will overflow because the love of God is deeper and wider than all of the sin and loss and heartbreak of this world. Jesus is the good shepherd, John tells us, and he will not leave us alone as we do this work. We are following someone and there is someone with us. The peace of Christ be with you always is not a greeting. It's a description. Christ dwells in me and you right now right here. Our hearts need not condemn us. We need not drown in worry or guilt or despair. Instead, we will feel holy peace and love never ending, grace covering us, God abiding in us, our cups overflowing. Church, in the knowledge of the resurrection, let us have boldness before God. God, teach us how to lay down our lives for justice and love. Be with us as we bear witness with eyes wide open. Help us to live into your kingdom. Embody us with your spirit, your breath flowing through us, your son walking beside us as we try each day to love as you have called us. Amen.